Hi, I'm Ryan Manson with Modern Riding Magazine, and today I'm with Kyle Martelli from American Heritage Performance. And Kyle's going to walk us through what it takes to convert this junkyard block into a Summit 5.3 LS motor. All right, Kyle, so I know this block didn't look like this when it originally came to you. Why don't you walk me through what you guys had to do to convert this junkyard 5.3 LS motor? Yeah, so it came pretty rusted out. We had to uh, dip it and clean it all out really good, all the oil guys and everything. And then we started with the machine work of um, line boring okay. the uh, mains. And uh, that trued us out. And we did that adding um, ARP main studs. So here that gave us you know, better clamping force and it trued us to the cap to the main and gave us a better center line point to start off of. Then from there, we uh, bored the cylinders 30 over and diamond honed them, and then zero deck the decking surface. And uh, from there, yeah, it's uh, cleaned up, painted, ready to go. Now when you do the bores, are you measuring the pistons first and then you're, you're machining the block to suit the pistons? Correct, correct. Once you bore it, you mic the pistons, making sure everything's accurate to all eight, and then you hone to the size you of the piston. Finish hone to the clearance yeah, exactly. of the piston. Gotcha, mm -hmm. okay. And as far as the cam alignment or anything like that, is there any machining done there? Um, so as long as we have the center line on the main correct, okay. the cam will be fine, yes. Okay, so there's no need to line bore that. Correct, yeah. Gotcha. Well, why don't we take this uh, motor into your American Heritage Performance clean room and uh, see what parts we're going to throw on this guy. Sounds good. All right, Kyle, so uh, we walked through what it took to get that old junkyard block up to spec. And yep. now I see a bunch of Summit racing parts on your assembly table. Why don't you walk me through starting with the crank and uh, let's see what our rotating assembly consists of. Yeah, so it's a uh, full Summit rotating assembly here. The uh, crank, forged crank, okay. uh, 3622 stroke and a 24X reluctor wheel on it. That's a stock stroke? It is. Correct. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, here we have the pistons, uh, forged piston as well, the Summit LS Pro. Okay. And uh, 30 over as okay. well. So stock specs, we're kind of sticking to that. We're not going wild, not a big stroke, yeah, big bore, yeah, nothing like that. Yeah, you want to keep it a little more tame there. Okay. Um, It'll still reliable. be a nice, torquey hot rod motor. Absolutely. Though, absolutely. Very cool. Yeah, and then the uh, rods here uh, upped it to a 6125 okay. rod length and a uh, nice LS Pro. So, yeah, that's it for the rotating assembly. So it looks like all Summit rotating assembly with uh, some ARP stuff thrown in, it looks like, as well. Yep. Very yep. cool. Very cool. Why don't you uh, tell me about the camshaft? We're using Summit racing equipment again. What are the specs on this guy? So that's a uh, 222 intake, 234 exhaust okay. with a 115 lobe separation. And uh, yeah, really torquey cam, um, good idling, you know, and it's a nice little hot rod cam. So it'll be very street friendly with a little bit of power. Yeah, it's very street friendly. Well, Kyle, all this stuff looks great. Why don't I get out of your way and uh, we can start assembling. Sounds good. Okay, to start hanging these pistons here, we'll um, take the rod, get it into the vise. Now, what we'll start with is putting some assembly lube on the small end of the rod for the wrist pin, then into the piston journals, just like that. And for extra insurance, we like to lubricate the wrist pin itself. Just a thin film is all you need. So then you come over here, line that in. Goes in real nice. You want to move it around a little bit, make sure that assembly lube gets where it needs to go. So now these pistons utilize a spiral lock groove. And a little tip to help install these is to take the two ends, pull them apart a little bit, just like that. And then you're gonna slide them in, grab a pick, and then just kinda work your way around. So it's just gonna wrap around until it sets in. And it's in. Then we'll go and break the cap loose. That broke us loose there, off the dowels, and we can hang it like that. Well, the next step we're going to do is start installing cam bearings. Okay. Um, now, this is something typically your machine shop will do for you, and in this case, we'll explain, go through the process of how to do it yourself. Very good. 
Now I'm just doing this just to kind of help lubricate it as I'm pressing them in. Sure. I don't want it to score up anything. In or... rock or anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All cam bearings have two oil galley holes. They never use both of them. I have a feeling they did two just for uh, manufacturing purposes. You only have to line up the one because there's only one hole on the block. Now, if you mix these up, how do you know which is which? They have the part number inscribed on them. Okay. It tells you the part number of each individual one. And you'll see here to number one and number five are the same size. Hmm. It's the others that are varying in okay. outside diameter. Okay. So now we're going to start lining up this cam bearing to this specific journal. And you're going to want that oil galley hole to line up with my Sharpie mark that I made on the block. So right there. That should be good there. So what we're trying to do is just center that cam bearing in that journal and make sure that it is clear of that lifter bore. So what we're doing here is just test fitting with a uh, cam that we had and we're just checking to make sure that the uh, cam bearings are not caulked in any ways and causing us any binding in the camshaft. So as you can see here, it went in nicely and it spins over nicely. That tells us we have good clearance and no uh, caulked cam bearings. But you'll notice when we do the real cam and we use that thick grease, it won't spin over quite as nicely, yeah. but we know it's good, you know. There's no question about it. So we got the cam bearings in. Yep. All our tolerances checked out. There's one more thing we got to do to prep this block though before it can start receiving parts. What's that? Yeah, what we want to do is start installing the uh, oil galley and coolant block off plugs. Okay. Um, so we've got four in total and a uh, little dumbbell here. So some of these are going to block coolant passages, others for oil galleys. Okay. Now for the uh, large one here. Pretty self-explanatory. Pretty self-explanatory. It can only go one spot. These three, they're all identical. Okay. And they can go in any, any order, it does not matter. So what we're looking at here is one to block off the oil galley there. We got one more for the oil galley in the front of the block there. And that is an area that if you um, choose to prime the engine ahead of time, uh -huh. this method, you would pull this one out to be able to access this area here. Gotcha, because you, you can't just spin the motor, you can't spin the oil pump to prime these engines. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if it's in the car, yeah. Right. If it's on a dyno, you could, but uh, in a okay. car situation, yeah. So the last plug goes in for the coolant, and that is on this side. Okay, so one last thing we want to do for the oil galley plugs is to install this dumbbell here. And what it does is it goes in the rear of the block, and it connects to that front plug that we just installed. And what I like to do is it's got an O-ring on it and I like to just lubricate it a little bit just so it doesn't score up that O-ring seal when going on install. So you'll come into the back here, slide that in and it'll just work its way in and then give it a little push. And once that's flush, you know you're in. And there's a cover on the back side that holds that in. Yes, yeah, the rear cover will hold that in place so it won't pop out. So Kyle, it looks like our block is fully prepped. What's next? We get to yep. put the crank in? Block is ready to go. So next step is dropping the crank in. So what we have here, we've already final washed the crank. And uh, that's a key, key thing you have to focus on when building an engine is making sure everything is clean. Just because we got it back and it looked clean out of the box doesn't mean it is. Um, especially after it's been balanced, they've drilled holes in the crank. And so that creates chips and dirt and debris. And you need to make sure you get all that out of all the oil galley passages with, you know, a pipe cleaner kind of thing and uh, really scrubbing it clean. Cool. Why don't we get this thing in the block? Yeah. So we'll start out lubricating the uh, main journals with some assembly lube. Just using some cleavite here on a brush. Just applying it a little liberally. Just getting it on there. We'll also lubricate the uh, bearings themselves. So this is just extra insurance, making sure we're properly lubricated. Gently set it into place. And once it's in, you don't want to turn it. You just want to start installing the caps. So we got that down. 
And since we're using ARP studs, what we want to do is lubricate all of the threads to the bolt or the nuts. So that ensures that we are getting the proper torque on these threads. So now that we have them all uh, run down a little bit, what we're going to do is the thrust cap here, we're going to back off the nuts just a little bit, just so that there's no tension on them. And now we're going to go down and start incrementally torquing down the studs. Start in the middle here, turn this on. You start with the middle uh, studs and you work your way outwards. So we're just going to take it to 20 foot pounds right now. Now that the inners are there, we'll work to the outer studs. Same thing, 20 foot pounds. Just working from the middle, working our way out. Then we're going to go back to the center. 34, 35 foot pounds is what we're after. Okay. Now we're going to go to our final torque on the uh, inner studs, which is 60 foot pounds, according to ARP specs. So we'll start with number two. Now we're switching to the outers. Final torque is 50 foot pounds. Okay. Now you'll notice I left the center cap totally alone. These are still loose. I didn't want to tighten these down yet because we have to now adjust for our thrust. By setting our thrust, take a rubber mallet, hit the front of the crank, and what we're doing is aligning those two mating surfaces of the two bearing caps. So we're just going to go. So now we can go ahead and torque these. Okay. So now that these are all torqued up, what we have to do now is do these side bolts. They actually bolt to the outside of the block. That means that you're going to want to put a little bit of RVT silicone right on the shoulder of the bolt. And then you go in and run it in. So now we'll just final torque these to 20 foot pounds and be good. So now once we know everything has been torqued properly to spec, what we'll go through is torque stripe all of our nuts and fasteners to ensure, and it's a mental check, sanity check if you will, that everything was done properly. So now if we did our job right, this will spin nice and freely as it does. And you want to ensure as you're spinning it, you don't feel a particular hard spot at any one point. Like it wants to, it should be nice and smooth around full 360 degree rotation. Okay, so now that we've installed the crank properly and everything's torqued down, we set our crankshaft end play, but what we want to do is double check to see what it actually is. And to do that, we set up a dial indicator here on a magnetic stand. We zero it out. And what we want to do is be able to spin this with that zero. And we want to be able to push the crank this way and that way. And you're actually checking the amount of movement that that crank can move, the end play. So if that moves, so we're right there to right there. So we're about six thou of crankshaft end play, end to end, which is exactly what we want. That's right in the range. What we're also going to check is the run out of the reluctor wheel. GM spec calls for about like 40 thousands run out they allow and that's how wobbly essentially that reluctor wheel is. We like to see a lot less than that. So right about there's the max. So about nine thousandths run out here of that reluctor wheel. So that's very good. That's definitely what we want to see. Crankshaft is good now. We can uh, move on to piston rings and uh, installing the pistons. All right, so the uh, crank is in the block and we're moving on to the uh, rotating assembly. But before we do that, we got to address some ring fitment. Yeah, so um, we're working here, uh, two different compression rings here. We got the second ring and the top ring. We have okay. to, they both require file fitting. Gotcha. Uh, none of them will, out of the box will be fitted for you. So right. just another step you have to take. Um, so we'll start with the uh, second ring. And uh, what it is, is a Napier. So it's a Napier second. It just means it has a little bit of a hook to it to scrape the oil off of the cylinder walls. OK. Uh, and both of these rings are 1.2 millimeter. Sorry. OK. And uh, yeah, it's pretty standard for these pistons. So 
what we do is just set it in there. This allows you to get perfectly centered and level to, so it's not coming in crooked or anything. You're lining it perfect right every time. And it just sets it in there nice and neat. So what we'll measure. Yeah, you can see it's almost got Yeah, it's, no pretty, much, it's pretty close to button up together right, right now. Which, what happens if we make that too tight or if we left it like that and installed it, what's gonna happen? When uh, it heats up, they will butt together and you've seized your piston yeah, essentially. Seize yeah. it, you'll break a ring, break exactly. a ring land, all kinds of bad things yeah, happen, Yeah, right? absolutely, yeah. So we'll check this. Yeah, it's about three thousands right now. And what are we looking for? So we're looking on the second ring, maybe about 23,000. Okay, so yeah, we need to there. go up another 20,000. Yeah, so. exactly. So we just wanna do that and check it. All right, so we've got all our uh, upper and lower compression rings filed to fit. Yeah. Let's talk about the oil control rings a little bit. Yeah, so we have a waffle. These are come. You don't need to worry about file fitting these. They are going to come into size perfectly for your board. Okay. Uh, these, it depends on the manufacturer. Uh, these are Hastings rings, but uh, and these come pre-gapped already. Okay. And you want typically at least 15 thousandths gap on these. Um, but a lot of manufacturers won't pre-gap these for you. You'll have to do them yourself. So you always want to check them and see where they're at. Um, the other thing about these in particular is that they always come a little bit dirty. So you want to make sure you properly clean all your piston rings before assembly. Now when you're installing these, you want to make sure that your end gaps on all the rings are never near each other. You want to offset them so that these two gaps are not going to meet each other. And that adds just an extra area for that leak down to come through and that, you know, remove all your pressure. So we'll put one on this corner here. And you don't need to press them apart. You can kind of just roll them around to get to your groove. And they'll just fall into place like that. And it should feel like that. You want to move it around, center it. It should have a nice feel to it. Never lock up anywhere. Just spin freely like that. That's a nice fit there. So after that, we'll grab our number eights. So here's where it's important. We'll start with our second ring. And you want to make sure your little indent there is facing upwards. So we'll take this, we'll go like that, and then we'll roll it. And then just lift it up and pick it in there. Again, it should spin nice and freely, have that free motion. If it feels like it's locking up, chances are you have a burr on where you created your end gap. So you just want to get rid of any burr like that. And we're going to set these, the second ring, bottom of the skirt, top ring, top of the skirt. So we'll go there. Again, roll it. And then you can just pick it up. And it's in. And there we got it. Like that, yeah. So before we start, getting the pistons into the bores, we want to lubricate the journals on the rods. Um, just like what we did on the, for the mains, we'll lubricate the rod journals and the rod bearings themselves. So now that we're going to start uh, installing these pistons, um, this is a bit of a slow, tedious process here. And what we're going to do, we'll start with number eight. You want to double check that everything is right. You lubricated your wrist pins well. Everything looks right. Your rings haven't moved. They're clocked and set the way you wanted them. And then we'll remove the cap. We've already lubricated the journal with assembly lube. Now we're gonna do the same on the rod bearing. And we've already installed some ARP lube on the uh, ARP 2000 rod bolts. So those are already lubed up, we're good there. Next step, we'll take it. Valve relief's pointing up, we'll take this. And we're just going to get some oil on the rag there. And what we're trying to do is get oil in on those piston rings to help lubricate those. It eases installation, makes it a lot easier. Uh, it also helps if the motor is going to be sitting for a while. You want to have a little bit of oil on that surface so there's not so much friction. So we're just going to want to make sure 
there's a healthy dose of oil on the rings. You don't need it on the top or on the sides here. The skirt is nice to have some oil on it as well. And then I'm just gonna move the rings around a little bit just to make sure it gets into those grooves there. We'll take the piston ring compressor, sit it in there. Just gotta be gentle with it and Okay, so then we come over to here. You make sure your journal is on the bottom end of the stroke. You don't want to be at top dead center, you want to be at the bottom dead center. So we'll go ahead, slide that in. You're also always making sure that this little chamfer here is always facing out of the journal. So on this side, it's going to be facing that way. On this bank, it's going to be facing the other direction. So on this one, just go in like that, fit it in. You don't want to be aggressive, you just want to let it slide in, find its place. And then you want to, as best you can, make these valve reliefs here perpendicular. You're just going to seat the ring compressor, and it's in. So now we just bring it down. You just want to incrementally torque it. You don't want to go all the way on one of them and not the other. Ease into it on both. And we'll leave that there for now. We'll start assembling all eight of them and then we'll go back and torque all of them together. All right, so now that we have all the pistons in, we got to torque them down. And one thing you always want to look at is, we'll measure it with a feeler gauge, but you want to make sure you have that side to side movement on these connecting rods. So we'll bring it up. Same thing with these, you want to incrementally torque these down. The final torque is 82 foot-pounds. So we're just going to take them to about 25. Do 40. So now that we've got them all, uh, all the rod bolts torqued up, we're just going to start torque striping them. Again, our sanity check that everything was done and done correctly. So now that they're all torqued, we just want to check what our gap is here, making sure we have sufficient clearance for the two when they're rocking together. So, so we got about 22 thousandths, which is right about where we want to be. So uh, yeah, now let's start on uh, installing the rear cover here. And we're using just a factory GM cover. We want to make sure when we install it, we're using specialty installation tools. Also, I guess a good point to thing is to make sure that dumbbell is in there because once you cover it, you'll never know if it's not in. Now, if that guy's missing, we're getting unfiltered oil, essentially. It's just bypassing the oil filter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is bad. <laughs> now, the front cover, it's probably a similar situation, right? Mm -hmm. Very similar. So you use an installation tool on that as well? Yeah, yeah. Right, you want hard surface on hard surface to center that perfectly. Right, because now that's now all I'm concerned about here is this rocking. Right. Okay. Okay, but this can make sure that that seal is going to get centered the right where area. it wants yeah. to be. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do this. So as you'll see, that fixture helped us stay flush with the pan rail here and the gasket just sits out a little bit proud, which is gonna be perfect for sealing. Now this is when I like to switch to a different assembly lube. Okay. Something a little bit thicker, cause I don't want it. it's a lot easier for this to have it runny and just come off than uh, bearings, cause you know, bearings kind of keep enclosed. it around. Yeah. yeah. But this isn't, so it wants to just kind of run off into the oil pan. So I'll use a little bit thicker assembly loop here. So now that we got the camshaft in place, uh, we want to put the cam retainer plate on. This is going to keep that camshaft from being able to walk forward and back. And uh, get the Allen bolts here. And we're actually going to put a dab of Loctite, blue Loctite, on these just to keep it from going anywhere. So we got those in. Torque those to 11 foot pounds. We're just going to start torque striping them. Again, our sanity check that everything was done and done correctly. So what we're doing now is installing the uh, Woodruff keys. 
into the crank snout. And this back one is for the crank gear that attaches for the timing set. This front one here is for the balancer. Keep it from spinning. There we go. So this crank gear here has a little bit of a press fit on that snout. So what we're doing is rather than smacking it with a hammer, we'll gently bring it into place with another gear. Good to go. All right, so the rotating assembly is in, the camshaft is in, and it's time to assemble our timing set. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what it takes to put that in and get it dialed in accurately? Yeah, so the crucial thing you have to worry about here is because we're dealing with cam timing, is you want to make sure your timing marks are lining up correctly. Okay. And to help with us, assist in that, I like to uh, mark on the dot of where your timing mark is on the cam. And we'll do the same on the crank gear here. We'll just mark that. So that's a clear visual of what you're trying to do here. And so now what we want to do is have these two dots meet each other. Okay. So as you can see, as we move and sweep through there, and what we're trying to do is with the crank st heading straight up and that number one cylinder is at top dead center. And we can double check that we are we're coming back up. So we'll go through it again. Come up. Right about there. So we know that is that top dead center there. And we can just adjust this until our, our dots get as close as they can and meet each other there. So once we know we're there, we can pull that off. So now that we have a rough idea of where that's lining up, we can set it in. Now this is in. a stock style timing chain set in that you don't have a bunch of different adjustments that you can make for retarding or advancing the cam, correct? Correct, it is just set at zero advanced, zero retard. So you're, yeah, neutral there. The crank to, uh, only has one Woodruff key to right. focus on. You can't so move you it. know, yeah, as long as that dot is facing upwards and that piston is at the highest point, you know you're right where you should good be. You go. And then you just line that dot to that one. And you know you're good. So now we're just gonna torque it to uh, 25 foot pounds. And we're using uh, ARP hardware here. Well, it's the end of day one. It looks like we've got our short block assembled. What do you think? Yeah, it came together nicely. And um, tomorrow we'll start working on the top end and get this ready for the dyno. Cool. Sounds good.